Hello friends. Today we're going to be working on the gray water system in the boat. When we bought Sarpedon, uh, she didn't have a hot water heater and she didn't really have a good solution for the gray water system. Sarpedon was designed to be what they call a wet head. Uh, this means that the shower is not separated from the bathroom but is actually integrated into it. So things like a draining floor in the head are a common way to deal with the shower uh, gray water. Uh, we also have a drain that runs from the sink directly down into the bilge. This means that any of the gray water generated by um, bathing or brushing tea um, would end up in the bilge. The end result of this is all the water would collect down here in the bilge. And there isn't really a good way to evacuate that from the boat without putting another hole in the boat or pumping it up above the water line. So I think we've come up with sort of a unique system where we don't have to add any more holes in the boat at all. The gray water here in the kitchen from washing dishes discharges directly overboard. Uh, this is accomplished through a through hole that is deep below the water line uh, at the top of the keel. Um, we want to tie into that, but we don't want to make a risk of creating another way for ocean water to find its way back into the boat. So we actually have this old spigot uh, from a green water pump or raw water pump uh, that was used to bring seawater or river water onto the boat for doing the initial wash on the dishes. Uh, it was replaced by the previous owner uh, with this hand pump. Uh, so currently this spigot's not connected to anything. So we're gonna tie into this spigot as a discharge uh, for the gray water coming out of the bathroom. Uh, we're going to use a pump to pump directly to this, which will allow it to drain into the sink drain and then discharge overboard. And we create the air break by using the, the space between the sink basin and the spigot, so we don't have any risk of ocean water coming back into the boat through this connection. When we initially upgraded the uh, head from a raw water hand pump toilet to our new electronic freshwater pump, uh, we originally were going to locate the controls here, but we found that your knee would actually hit the controls, uh, so it was not a good location. Uh, instead, we're actually going to put this control box down here to control the sump pump that's going to pump the water from the um, bilge here into the spigot we were just looking at. First, we need to make this hole a little bigger. <laughs> bilge switch that we're going to use. Um, it's a pretty common style uh, with a off manual auto and a high water alarm built in. Um, we have already tagged and put on all the crimp connectors. Um, I did a short yesterday showing how we tested the switch to make sure everything was working right and I'll put a link down that in the description. Um, but now we're just gonna get this mounted and start running our wires uh, to get everything connected. For the gray water drain, we're going to be using the half inch inner diameter uh, braided hose. Um, this is pretty common on boats um, and we'll be using that to pull the water out of that uh, bilge area um, and then pump it to the faucet at the galley sink. Um, now, since this is gray water, it's not going to be fresh clean water. Um, we want to make sure that we don't get any debris in there that could clog up the pump. The pump does have its own filter, pre-filter, um, that will keep anything of damaging size from going into it. Uh, but to make it so we don't have to clean that out constantly, uh, I do want to put a um, 
mesh over this so that we can uh, protect it from hair and things like that. Uh, so to that end, we have gotten this uh, mesh filter. Um, it does have a uh, garden hose type connection um, with this mesh screen. This should be sort of our hair trap. Uh, this will need to be taken out and cleaned once in a while. Uh, so to that end, we are going to use a PEX connection and a small piece of PEX pipe uh, to create sort of a rigid size to this. Uh, at the other end of the PEX connection, we'll have a threaded female connection and this hose barb connection and that's what will actually tie into the vinyl tubing. Now the other piece of the puzzle that we're going to need is a way to attach the float sensor. So as you can see this float sensor is really made to go around a larger bore pipe. Um, something about this size would be perfect, right? Um, on the PEX tubing it's just not as good of a fit. Uh, so to that end, I've also gone ahead and drilled a hole here to add this eyelet. And now we can attach the float using this sort of hex ring that sits around the screener, uh, strainer and thread the zip tie through the eyelet. And this will allow the float sensor to sit right above where the screen intake is. So as the water level rises, it'll raise this float up and trigger the pump. Now for the high limit, what we're going to do is run the hose through this T. with a 90 degree attachment here. And then this will be at the bulkhead where the water comes out. And the high limit can be mounted using the zip ties directly to this 90 degree. Uh, so this is just sort of sitting there floating as a resting point for mounting the high level switch. Uh, what we wanna do is make sure that alarm goes off as we're getting close to where that bulkhead is uh, so that we're not getting water intrusion into the main bilge from the gray water for the shower. Now as this unit is um, made to be disassembled so it can be cleaned, um, we are not going to be crimping any of these connections. Uh, they're just going to be uh, sitting in the, in the thing so that as the pump runs, um, the suction will help keep this together. Well, let's get started. The raw water or green water hose that was sticking out through here is what used to uh, provide water for the old toilet. Um, so now that we've pulled that hose back, we actually have a conduit in which we can run um, our shower drain hose. We have assembled the apparatus uh, without the upper float sensor. Uh, I'll do that once it's fully installed so that we can get it properly set up. But here you can see the stringer assembly and the float switch all set up. So now we just need to get it run through the bulkhead. So as I mentioned earlier, our old toilet used raw water or seawater um, to manually flush with a manual pump. Uh, so that end I have pulled the raw water hose out and we are going to cap it with this elbow and then add this stainless steel valve. Uh, this valve is a little special. Um, it is what they call locking valve. So what we'll do is we'll turn it to the lock closed and then you slide this piece down and that prevents you from being able to unlock it. And then we'll throw a zip tie through here and mark this as a raw water valve. Um, this will be important for a future project where we may need to add um, something that uses raw water um, for functionality on the boat. 
So we don't want to just completely remove this um, connection. So now we have this closed off, but we can still open it up if we should need it in the future. So we now have it where the screen intake is at the lowest point in the bilge and the float valve is right next to it and can move freely, which is exactly what we want. Uh, we'll need to put the upper limit float switch right here and then we'll be able to start routing the wires and connecting the hoses on the pump side. Okay, so we have got the intake mounted and we have run the vinyl hose into the um, bulwark here and it continues under the floor through the galley to right here so we're going to open up this panel and that's where we're going to be mounting our pump okay so this is with the floor panel open i can see our main bilge pump uh, and here is the hose coming from uh, the shower sump. Uh, we'll be connecting our new pump uh, on the wall right here and then connecting into the drain hose which is on this side. So as you may remember from some of our previous installations, uh, DC circuits are measured in the round trip length of the circuit. Uh, so in this case, if we were to run from our uh, control panel up in the nav station, all the way out to the head through the galley, and then back under the floor, we're talking probably 30 feet one way. Uh, that means it's a 60 foot circuit. And in the middle of that circuit is those little float switches with really dinky wires. Um, so we don't want to run the power to control this through all of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a second power line directly from the nav station control panel uh, straight to the um, area down here where the um, pump is going to go. And then we're going to connect it all up with our good friend, the relay. Um, now, some of you out there may be able to make sense of these little control circuits. I always have to kind of look things up and then I break out the label maker and I go ahead and pre-mark it so that I don't get confused when I'm setting it all up. Uh, but basically what this will do is this will allow the power from the control panel to go directly into this and then the signal from the float switches um, will go through the boards into here and uh, tell the pump when to turn on. This way we don't have to worry about the current draw of the pump uh, going through all those little reed switches and thin wires. Um, this should make the whole installation a lot safer uh, and a lot more reliable. Okay, so we've got the pump mounted and the hose is run and the relay is mounted next to the pump above the uh, water connections just in case there's any leaks or drips. 
Uh, it is a watertight relay uh, and we do have backups just in case it's not as good as it claims to be. Um, but we will give this one a shot. Now we need to finish uh, connecting the rest of the vinyl tubing uh, and then we can get the wires run. We are now under the galley sink and this is the hose that comes down from that faucet and the hose coming from our sump pump. And we are going to tie everything together uh, with this uh, check valve that will prevent the water from flowing back down into the um, sump when the uh, hose is filled with water but the sump is empty. Um, so we'll get this check valve assembled and get everything connected up. Okay, so we've now got our check valve installed and we've uh, mounted the hose to the firewall. Um, now we just need to run some electrical wires and get everything connected up. So not to bore you with the details, but we have actually wired up the switch. Uh, I just need to pull the relay through the floor. So we're going to use our fish tape to do that. We have our relay wire is all wired up. Now we just need to connect this. Now we just need to connect this to the relay. We are all connected. Still need to do a little bit of wire management to get everything tidied up, but now let's test it. We have power. Now we need to test the float switches. So to test the float switches, we're going to go ahead and just switch this to main or to auto. Okay, so we're going to test the lower float switch. We're going to test the lower float switch. Mm. Okay, and we're gonna test the upper float switch. So it's off the alarm. I'm gonna switch it back to off. We're gonna test the upper float switch for override. Yep, everything's working. Well, thank you friends for joining us for another project video. Uh, season one is coming to a close pretty soon. Uh, so wrapping up these projects. Uh, please make sure you like and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts about what we did today or any questions, remember to leave a comment down below. We love hearing from you guys. Uh, we really uh, love interacting with all of you. Uh, be kind to yourself this week and um, look forward to seeing you soon. Bye friends.